Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now we're in a battle at the moment against some mountain bandits because of course we're still trying to earn a lot of renown as we go forward here. I've been attempting to find some additional tasks for us as well because of course the more tasks that we can get, the better, you know? Because yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to find that family feud quest because I did actually uh, <laughs> receive a number of comments that were very, very helpful indeed. I'm going to tell my people to charge in now because otherwise they're just going to get murdered. But uh, yeah, it would be uh, a good idea for us to get that family feud quest now because I think I can pretty easily do it because apparently what you need to do is you need to move one of your... Well, you need to move the NPC in question that is added to your party to the top of your party so that he, actually, he or she actually joins in the zone itself and then you can take them to wherever they need to be and that's it that's the end of the quest pretty easy so it wasn't bugged it was just me being a little bit silly but there you go there's 1.3 renown for us right there and that's the point we're just trying to get as much renown as we can we can and if i can find that other quest by the way you know that other quest that we gained the uh mercenary quest that uh basically said to us hey can you take these mercenaries off my hands, can you find them another master, and so on and so forth, and yeah, that would be a fantastic thing for us to do. Now, I do have Istania's quest, Istiana's quest even, and uh, you can see here that it is to eliminate this particular hideout, this particular hideout right here. Now, the main issue that I have with going and fighting in that hideout is that there's 35 units there. And in the previous episode, we barely escaped with our life when we were doing the forest bandit hideout for one of the other... Oh, hello. That's a lot of mountain bandits right there. We might want to attack those. But yeah, anyway, as I was saying, in the previous episode, forest bandit hideout, 18 units, and we barely escaped with our life. So I'm pretty sure I won't be able to do the 35 until we have leveled up a couple more units, maybe until we've leveled up me a little bit more as well. And uh, and so I'm, I'm going to try and fight a little bit more in this episode, try to get some more tasks, tasks done and uh, just see how that goes overall. I think that would probably be the best thing that I can do. Whoa, there's a lot of looters around here. Whoa, okay, hello. That's a lot of people. All right, we, yeah, we barely caught them. We barely caught them. And there is actually a, oh, look at that. A band of sea raiders are actually going to uh, accompany them as well. Oh, this is going to be kind of interesting then. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with this. And uh, yeah, if you didn't see in the previous episodes, we've been doing quite a bit of smithing. I've actually started to level up my smithing quite a bit. And hopefully I will be able to continue leveling it up. All right, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful here. So I'm actually going to tell them to charge my cavalry there. And uh, there we go. Nice little bit of damage to the horse. And then I will place my other people out the front here. I'm going to need to put them into some kind of shield wall. It was a bit slow on that. But uh, yeah, it, it should be fine. It should be fine. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yes, eliminating my own troops. That has become a theme, has it not? Yes, absolutely. Don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. They don't mind. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Don't worry about it. All right, so, yeah, otherwise, these guys are now running away. Uh, there we go. Taken down. All right, so that's it. Nice. Ooh, 4.3 renown. That's pretty cool. We're also going to be gaining a pretty... Oh, I was actually thinking more uh, more money right there. More money than that, but okay. I guess that's fine. And there's a fish harpoon. Not as good as what I currently have. And a bunch of other stuff, which I'm still going to look at just because you never know. Maybe something's going to be a little bit better for us. Ooh, yes. Hello there. Better gloves. Very nice. And that seems to be about it. I'm going to have a look at some of our other friends here as well, because as you can see, there's actually something better for her. And this hat is actually better for her as well. These gloves are better, just by a very slight margin. And 
that's basically it. Okay, so we're going to continue just going through this and just have a look-see and make sure that we are wearing the best possible stuff. Okay, so she can wear this. The boots are a little bit better. And there we go. Okay, and Kiraslava, I think she's she's probably the best equipped that we have right now. So probably not going to be seeing anything else here that is that good for her. This is much better for Jin. Oh, she doesn't have she doesn't have a she doesn't have a cloak. Wow, that's that's bad. She doesn't even have a hat. Are you serious? Wow, I have left her out in the cold for much too much too long, haven't I? All right, so yeah, Pelasaur, as we know now, does not level up, so he's going to be a bit of an issue. Okay, so let's just loot everything else, and uh, then we will continue onward. So let's let's go into the village here. Okay, they they don't have anything for us. I'm actually going to recruit a couple of people. As you can see, 14 wounded right now, which is not not a big deal at all. Not a big deal. They're going to be back on their feet in no time, thanks to Alaska. And uh, look at that, she's actually gaining skill points in riding now as well, which is actually very cool. Okay, so let's just continue to walk around, see if we can find some tasks from some people. And, uh, oh, we're actually next to Omor. That's hilarious. Look at that. It seems like we always keep uh, circling around to Omor again and again. I'm not entirely sure why that happens, but there you go. Anyway, let's go in there and see if there's a task for us. Yeah, there is from Devan. Escort Merchant Caravan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably not going to end up doing that. I, I kind of feel a bit sad that I can't because I feel like I just don't have a strong enough army. But I think that if I were to get a uh, larger party size, which is exactly what I'm trying to do by... Look at this. We're almost there. We only need two more Renown. Only two more Renown. And then we will have the next tier. So I'm very much looking forward to that because that's going to give us an additional 15 troops potentially. And I should go and help those villagers. Ah, too late. Ah. Oh. Okay, well, these guys are gonna gonna get it now. They're gonna get it because I, I really wanted to save those villagers, but all right. Uh, also, I think with our current looting situation, we should be pretty good, I think, to be able to afford that enterprise. I know a bunch of people have been recommending that I do a caravan. And I'm thinking of a caravan too, don't get me wrong. I think a caravan is actually really fun and maybe um, maybe more lucrative, but I was just a bit worried that it was going to be preyed upon. And then as a result, we were going to just literally have all of my profits just vanish, basically. So that was the main reason why I was a bit skeptical about it in comparison to a wood workshop. Because if we had the wood, wood workshop, then it's just literally going to be a passive benefit that is not really going to be attacked or anything like that. So that might be something to consider. I don't know whether it can be attacked. I know someone actually did mention in the comments that they have so they have like three, four caravans and they're raking in massive amounts of cash. And well... I wouldn't mind a piece of that pie a little bit, you know, I wouldn't mind a little bit of cash just to kind of tide us over a little. Okay, 1.4 renown from this. I was hopeful for at least two, but no such luck. These guys are running around with a huge amount of peasants. I don't think I'm actually going to be taking any of these peasants, even though they do level up into watchmen and everything. I don't know what the watchmen level up into, and I'd much rather have other kinds of units. So I'm not going to be taking the peasants. If I had a garrison of some kind, I would definitely take these peasants to place in there, because obviously that just makes sense to try and get the garrison reinforced as much as possible. But as it stands, that's probably not the best idea. All right, so I have 11 people that are wounded... And I should probably just continue. Oh, look at this. I, I did make it. I did make it. Look at that. I've got 77 spaces in my army now. That's fantastic. Bandit base near Algamon. Okay, let's have a look. Agalmon, even. And uh, let's have a look and see what it is. Uh, I could assign a companion with 10 good men for 10 days. Let's do that. Oh, I can't do that. Ooh, tactic skill and all that stuff is not available for us. That's unfortunate. Okay, so let's have a look and actually see what the bandit base is all about. Because it might be something doable. Uh, is it that? 
No, that's the same one. Surely, surely it's not that one. No? It's surely not that one. I is it the same? Oh no, if it's the same one, that is going to be so terrible. Because I don't think I can do it. Ah, uh, okay, well my clan, let's have a look. Yeah, so there you go. I am now at clan tier 2, which is actually fantastic. Very much appreciating that. And we have Pelasaur here taking up a slot and not really doing anything, which is not great. I could create a new party. Yeah, that actually uh, was mentioned by someone, but apparently they said that it's a little bit buggy at the moment. So basically, if you make a new party, uh, then your companion can run around with their own forces. Uh, but unfortunately, if they do that, sometimes they get stuck. Not entirely sure if that's been fixed or not, but uh, yeah, that might be a bit of an issue. And as you can see, Pelasaur is not leveling up at all. So he's basically, uh, well, kind of useless because he doesn't level up ever. So yeah, that's a bit worrying. Okay, so the bandit base. Mark the location of the hideout on our map. I'm pretty sure it's this one. I'm pretty sure it's this one. So I don't know what to do. Ooh, I really want to do it super badly. I really, really want to go in there and see what we can do. But I am very worried about generally just basically dying because if you know here's, here's the thing if you die in a bandit hideout you're done you lose all your troops and all of your companions and all that stuff so it's probably not the best idea for us to try that out but i kind of want to so i guess what we're going to do is we're actually going to go in there uh, after this after i sell and uh, I'm going to sell the crude iron, I think, and the wrought iron and all that stuff. Should I? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to sell it because we do need it for crafting, you know, increasing our smithing skill and so on and so forth. So we're just going to get 902 gold from that. I could buy some more desert horses, but they're actually quite expensive here. So I'm probably not going to do that. 15.6 in gold now. Uh, that kind of makes me think, hey, you know what? Let's go into the tavern here. Choose the prisoners to be ransomed. Okay, so now here's the thing. I think that if we do this, we are going to gain roguery. At least I hope so. Recruit prisoner. I don't want to recruit the prisoner, no. Okay, so let's let's do that. Do I get roguery for doing that? Or do I actually have to go into the tavern? Because I know that uh, selling prisoners individually, I think, has that effect. And is there actually a ransom broker in here? There's a townsman, there's a musician. Oh, wait a minute, I can just hold alt. I keep forgetting that. Great. Uh, no, it doesn't seem like there actually is, unless they've got uh, different names. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, who'd have thought? They're real animals, always drunk and stabbing each other. Uh, okay, a wise decision. I could use someone like you in my company. Oh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't actually uh, recruit any more companions, which is unfortunate. So I guess I guess there's no ransom broker, so I guess I will just sell the prisoners individually because apparently that is what will increase my roguery skill. So if I do it this way, does that, does that actually... Does that actually... Okay, there we go. Maybe... Yeah, there you go. We gained three skill points in roguery, and we gained a skill point in trade, and we weren't gaining that before. Can you imagine how many, how many, uh, <laughs> how many prisoners I have sold, and literally just to get that? Oh, that that is such a, that is such a shame, isn't it? Absolutely, such a shame. Okay, let's go into the smithy real quick because I can smelt some stuff. I don't have all the required materials apparently, so uh, let's see what I can do here. There we go. And let's do that. We'll gain some more hardwood as a result of it. Gain some more hardwood. And then we will go and do some more refining. Fantastic. Smithing is now level 30. We're going to continue trying to get uh, smithing leveled up. Because I would love to be able to create my own sword or something. Uh, I think that would be quite fun. So let's do... Uh, yeah, I actually don't have any more energy. All right, well, that's absolutely fine. Now, I was actually thinking of going into the arena here because there is a prize of a Destrier, which is a very nice horse. So I'm thinking maybe we'll try it. Yeah, 
I don't know. We'll, we'll try it and we'll see how it goes. It seems like this is a very large, very large... Ooh, this is good. This is actually good for me. As you can see, I actually did 87 damage right there. Uh, my horse is taking a bit of a battering at the moment, but uh, hopefully I will be able to do something against this archer. Yes, there we are. 94 damage. Uh, bad timing. Yes. At least. Terribly sorry. There we go. There's an <laughs> Imperial veteran. Uh, yes. Oh, Jin. So sorry. Okay. Okay. We're, we're fine. We're doing all right. I think I might be through to the next round no matter what. Because I have eliminated quite a few units so far. And... Uh, Oh, I can actually couch with this? Oh, I didn't even realize I, I could couch with this. I didn't even see the icon. Okay, so yeah, we can actually couch with this thing, which is just insan insanity. Whew, that was close. <laughs> uh, I thought to myself, oh, I'm dead. Yeah, that's usually what happens when I, uh, when I couch as well. Usually I get murdered by someone actually using the manual attack because they outrange you then. And that's the point. So... Got to be a bit careful here. We've got to be the aggressor. You know, we have to go pretty close to the Sturgeon Warrior. Ooh. Yep. Not enough. There's 54 damage to the leg. Oh, I was hoping for a little bit of an overhead there. Okay, his horse is done, but now this just makes him even more dangerous. As you can see. Okay, yeah. Uh, I could couch him, but couching him, and then he uses a manual attack, that's probably going to result in my death. Oh, he might... Yes. Oh, you, you might be making a mistake here, friend. Or not. Oh, it's a dance. It's a dance of death. Oh, I'm dead. Well, my horse is dead. Okay, let's see if I can do something here. Okay, this is... I am terrible with spears. Oh, no. Yeah, well, if they give me another spear and a mount in the next round, I should be all right. You know, I should be okay. Okay, so, yeah, they, they actually did do that. Okay, that's fantastic. Oh, Azerite Skirmisher. I'm so sorry. Whoa, that was, that was insane. Okay, I've got to get a bit more used to the length of the spear as well. The length really makes a huge difference to... Uh, what you can do. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're playing defensively. I mean, that is to be expected. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be careful here as well. That's the point. I'm trying to be careful, and maybe that is being a little bit too careful. That's probably it. Nice. There's the Sturgeon Warrior taken down. Barney seems to be getting a little bit more used to the whole, uh, the whole... Oh, nice. Nice. The whole tournament thing. Uh, at least if he's given a weapon that he can actually do relatively well with, then I think he'll do okay. But uh, if he's got, like, a two-handed or something like that, he might as well just say goodbye. <laughs> you know, that's, that's usually how things go uh, in these kinds of things for me. But, uh, yeah, well, we'll see if I can maybe just eliminate the last enemy for us. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought I... It's, it's actually least that we're up against right here. And Pelasaur... <gasps> Pelasaur actually killed her? Oh, wow. Wow, what a crazy, crazy underleveled fellow he is. All right, so, yeah, let's just skip the next round. And, uh... There's no, there's no point betting for me, in my opinion. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, I've been given a shield. We're up against Pelasaur himself. Wish I had some throne weapons right now. Oh, he's... Oh, I'm so sorry, Pelasaur. You're just too easy. He really is. Did you see that? He just left himself wide open. Now I'm going to get killed by Etheria. <laughs> what do you bet? What do you bet I'm going to get killed by Etheria? Yes, 100%. Oh, oh, I do have a sword and a shield. I might make a go of it. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, so I'm going for the overheads, you see. I'm going for the overheads, and I noticed that she didn't wear a helmet. And because she... 
obviously didn't have a helmet, it was very easy to do massive damage to her. Anyway, there we go. We gained a Destriere, which I am now going to be using. And that is another tournament win for us. Actually, kind of surprising. I guess it is literally just because, as I've said, it's weapon selection. It's dependent entirely on that, how well I do. Anyway, uh, I can't actually ride this because it needs... <laughs> It needs 90. It needs 90 riding. Wow. That's actually kind of crazy. Okay, yeah, so it's going to need 90 riding. That is amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, I think that's okay. I think we did all right there. And uh, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait here for some time. And then we will try, if we can, to take out the bandit hideout. What? What actually happened? Did you see that? Well, I'm going to include it anyway, even if there is no commentary or whatever. But uh, the point is, is I was waiting here for night time. I was, I was actually just waiting here to make sure that all of our forces were, you know, appropriately uh, restored in HP and all that stuff. And these guys, all of these mountain bandits, literally left the hideouts and you can see they're actually coming back now <laughs> that 18 group right there they literally left and now there's only five enemies here and it's actually the boss as far as i'm aware is it yeah it's actually just the boss i can't believe they decided to do that that has made my entire job so so much easier i thought to myself how am i going to do this and i was actually kind of worried but uh do you think I should duel this guy? Mm. Yeah, why not? Let's duel him. And he's done. <laughs> that was actually okay. I did alright with that duel, but uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit more used to the four directional blocking with the shield as well. Because I don't know whether you've noticed that, but... In Bannerlord, the shield does not only go in front of you. There's actually four different directions, you know, similar way to how you parry without a shield. So it's basically the same kind of thing, but obviously dependent on where you're being attacked from. So if you're being shot in a siege or something along those lines, then, of course, you are going to try and block in that direction. And so that's the thing that is a little bit new to me as well, because obviously I never never did that before in in warband there was just no no functionality for it but there you go we gained one renown oh wait a minute wait wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute okay so there's actually still something else to do here <laughs> okay so there is actually still something to do here we still need to go and collect the pieces so that was just the initial quest for the guy that we spoke to beforehand okay so wait a second the remains of a fire suggest that it's been recently occupied by its residents, but its residents, whoever they are, are well hidden for now. Okay, so wait a second. Let's just hope that they don't get more people to come in here. Because if they get more people to come in here, we might have some issues. So I'm going to see if we can go in in a couple of hours. There's a group of 18 mountain bandits, as you can see. They might try to... Yeah, there we go. We're going to wait until nightfall. And then we're going to head in. I think I might be able to do this now that there's only 15 in comparison to 35 in the, the well, I don't want to call it a garrison, but you know what I mean. Anyway, let's be careful. Uh, let's be careful. I might be able to do this now. Uh, I'm just going to try and uh, tank most of the attacks. Okay, now you can kill him. Thank you. Uh, we'll try and tank this guy throwing his little stones as well. There we are. He's dead. And yeah, I think we're yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. I don't think we can really lose at this point right now. I mean, obviously we're going to continue to level up our our troops and all that stuff. And speaking of that, I do need to give Kiraslava a two-handed weapon, even though it is going to make her very vulnerable to well all kinds of different ranged attacks. And it seems to me like archers are actually quite powerful. They seem pretty powerful in Bannerlord because most of the opponents that you're going to be facing are 
well, in the early game at the very least, are looters. And it's going to be pretty easy for you to take those guys out, especially if you're on a horse. You know, horse archery, once again, is one of those things where it actually does give you a huge amount of mobility, huge amount of damage output, and it's just generally able to make things quite simple. So there's also that. Oh, nice. I'm actually tanking. Do you see that? I'm actually tanking it. I'm, I'm blocking all of their attacks by standing in the way while our forces actually do the damage, which is very, very nice to see. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try and use some thrown weapons this time. Or, or not. Or not. Never mind. <laughs> I just thought to myself, yes, I'd like to use a thrown weapon because they're fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, well... You know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's literally a matter of, you know, matter of mere moments until you can throw your thrown weapon and hear that satisfying thud. Do you know what I mean? That satisfying thud of the thrown weapon hitting an opponent. But obviously I haven't been very lucky with, uh, with that kind of thing recently. So I'm kind of sad about that. Like now. Uh, a little bit. In the leg. In the leg. Pretty awful. Okay, let's see if I can maybe get a little bit extra accuracy. There we go. That's much better. And now, the boss. Alright, so do I want to... Uh, do I want to duel the boss? I'm not entirely sure about that. It might be fun. But it might be difficult. Let's try it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> little bit, a uh, little bit of overhead right there, and then we had it. Oh yeah, by the way, there is actually a shield bash. There's the shield bash. I did not realize that it's actually available in this. I was trying to use it the same way that I use it in Warband, where it's just right mouse, right mouse button, then left mouse button. But it's actually right mouse button followed by E, which is your your kicking. Uh, you're kicking key as well, so yeah, it kind of makes sense. But uh, that is definitely something I'm going to try and use in future duels, because that is definitely going to make things much, much easier for us. Anyway, there's our renown and morale, but obviously what we actually came for is the piece of the dragon banner. So hopefully that is actually going to be with us now. Yes, it is. All right, fantastic. Phew. Okay, I was uh, kind of worried about that, to be fair. But anyway, let's go into Epicrotia, and uh, we will see... Uh, who do I need to speak to? Istiana, right? I need to speak to Istiana. Um, I'm thinking I might trade first. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just going to trade a little bit. Okay, so I've got 264. I could get some more Sumter horses if I want to, but that does not increase our speed on the world map. So I'm going to get some more Step horses instead. And we're going to pay 800. Ooh. Mm, sure. Why not? That seems pretty decent. And I think I probably want to get a caravan as well. But for the moment, let's go and speak to Istiana. And we'll see what she has to say. I've gathered all pieces of the dra- Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do I want to go to the other guy first? Yes, to decide your path. Okay, I would like to destroy the Empire, so Istiana is not who I'm going to be speaking to. I would like to destroy it, mainly because I'm not going to be joining it. So, there's also that. Alright, so we've arrived in Maronath, and we will be speaking to Arzagos now. I have gathered all pieces of the Dragon Banner. What now? Excellent work. When you unfurl this banner and men see it, what they thought was lost, it will make... A powerful impression. Clearly, you have been chosen by heaven for a great purpose. I see the makings of a new legend here. Allow me to call you... Banner Lord. <laughs> what a cool moment. It's actually a very cool moment. All right. Right then, to the business of bringing down this cursed empire. As I see it, you have two options. You can create your own kingdom or support an existing one. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, a tutorial about how to create your own kingdom and how to support an existing kingdom. And I'm going to ask both things. To create your own kingdom, you must fulfill some conditions. Your clan must be independent of any realm. Your clan must have a significant amount of renown. I do not. 
You must gather a considerable amount of men. I do not, yes. Finally, you must rule a settlement that is not imperial. Find me when you are ready. Okay, and how do I support an existing kingdom? You should join the kingdom that you wish to support by talking to the leader. My informants will tell you once you pledged your support. Aha, uh -huh. thank you for your help. All right. So, I guess I will exit now. And uh, there's actually something that I wanted to do. Uh, leave members? Uh, what, what does that actually mean? Oh, so I can actually leave members in the settlement here. I'm not entirely sure why I'd want to do that. I think someone actually mentioned that if I wanted to uh, tackle the bandits in the alleyway, then I would be able to put those guys in in the garrison, basically, and then do something with them like that. So that might actually be something that we want to do. But uh, at the moment, I'm, I think I'm pretty happy the way that I am currently doing things. At least I, I think so. Maybe. <laughs> Anyway, there you go. We just uh, made a couple more pieces of that and leveled up our smithing a little bit more. And now what I would like to do is go back to Epicrotia. I'm not entirely sure why it's still... Now you may want to... Ah! You may want to talk with Istiana and take her opinions as well. All right, yes, sure, why not? And we've actually been given two other, uh, two other kingdoms. Uh, well, quests. Ugh, two other kingdoms. We've been given two other kingdoms. Oh, that would be, that would be nice. But anyway... As you can see right here, we need Clan Tier 3 to create your own kingdom. You also need 100 troops. I think we would probably be able to do that if we reached Clan Tier 3. And then we have to own a settlement, so we actually have to attack something ourselves. Which might actually be possible. It might be possible. Because if we take a look here, additional party size for every party in the clan, plus 15. And additional clan party, plus 1. So if we have a look at parties here, does this mean that... Shall I try this out? Select the leader of the new party. Should I try this? You know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to save. I don't usually do this that often, which is probably a mistake, but I'm going to save literally just because I don't want to have a crash or I don't want to have something happen that is uh, really, really bad. And uh, it might be a bug or something. So I'm going to make Lise the leader of the new party. Uh, ah, oh! Okay, this is actually cool. Okay, this is really cool. So she's going to use Vlandian units by the looks of things. And we can transfer people back and forth if we want to. I think I'm pretty happy for her to just have whatever she wants right there. I, I uh, Do I have some Vlandians? Um, no, but I have Imperials and I probably shouldn't be using Imperial units any further, should I? So it might make sense for me to give her the Imperials... Uh, and then we will start recruiting other people from elsewhere. So let's just do that. Wow, I've leveled up the Imperial units like super well. And now I'm just giving them away for nothing. Ugh, that kind of makes me a bit sad. But I kind of want to go with a different faction. I don't really want to go with Imperial units anymore, even though they're super good in my opinion. Anyway, let's click done on that and see what actually happens. Okay. Uh huh. So I can create. So I, I can create another party if I want to sometime down the line, and we have these expenses right now. So, as you can see, we're actually we're actually losing a lot of money thanks to her new party. Now, what does it actually do though? Aha! There there she is. Okay, so faction bear tilt. Oh, that's cool. So she is actually part of the bear tilt faction. And what what actually happens? Let me inspect your troops about your position in the clan, and that's it. Okay. But I I have no idea what uh, what she's going to be up to, or anything like that. I guess she's just going to run around. Maybe she's going to follow me. Maybe she's not. It really depends uh, on her what she decides to do. I suppose. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna... Ooh, okay, I gotta be a bit careful here, because I might very well get preyed upon by random looters now that I have such a small amount of troops. So I will have to be a bit careful about that. But we are gonna be moving extremely fast. You gotta bear that in mind, because now that I have a smaller party, most of it is going to be quite easy for us to deal with. So that should be kind of good. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around here... 
And we're going to go to Epicrotia and speak to Istiana. And do I want to sell anything? Is there anything to sell? What's this? Needs help with mountain bandits. Okay, well, I could do that, but I would prefer not to at the moment. I'm going to speak to Istiana first and see what she has to say. I've gathered all pieces. Impressive. Most impressive. Well, things will get interesting now. I will need to embroider a proper legend about you. Divine omens at your birth. That kind of thing. For now, we can call you Banner Lord, who brings down the wrath of heaven on the impudent barbarians. Now, there are two paths that lie ahead of you, my child. You can create your own faction to win our civil war, or support an existing one. Uh, okay, so it's basically just going to be the same thing. It must be well-renowned. You must gather a considerable amount of men, and you must own an imperial settlement. Uh-huh. And you should join the faction that you wish to support by finding its leader. With When the civil war began, I was a bit torn. Regea was the cleverest ruler, Garios probably the best fighter, and Lucon seemed to have the best grasp of our laws and traditions. But you can make up your own mind. My little birds will tell me once you pledge your support. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okay, so now we have spoken to both of them. We now know exactly what we need to do either way. So that's interesting. That is very, very interesting indeed. So let's go and just choose my prisoners to be ransomed because we're going to gain some, uh, well, we're going to gain a little bit of roguery experience every single time we do that instead of just selling them automatically. And I was actually f hoping that I might be able to find the Games Master because... As far as I'm aware, there are different games in every single kingdom, and I thought it might make sense for me to try out every single one. There's Etheria. Oh, okay, so apparently there's no Games Master here. And I... <laughs> oh, I took damage. Yep, that was a classic Barney maneuver, wasn't it? Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.